Welcome to the fourth lesson of the Shopify app building crash course. If you are watching this video during the premiere, then we are available in the live chat. We are available right now as we speak. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down there and we will answer them live. And if you just want to say hi, you can also do that. If you haven't watched the previous lessons, the playlist will be linked down below. Each lesson can stand on its own, but I highly recommend that you actually watch them in chronological order because they do build up on each other. If you've gone through the entire process so far, then by now you already have a specification with mockups and you have found your developers. Depending on how fast your progress is, you might actually already have a specific developer you're working with and time estimation, or you might not have that quite yet, which is also fine because we will cover it in this lesson. So the fourth lesson is the development process. And this is where you take all of the work that you've done up until now and start developing, start creating the actual product. The development process is the exciting part where your idea and preparation work actually come to fruition. This is when you will start seeing your product, your little baby growing into an actual product that other people can use. So let's get started and dive into the process. The first step in the development process is something we've talked about a little bit in the last lesson, and this is the review process. This is when you will review the specification document with your developers. The purpose of this stage is for you to make sure the developers have a perfect understanding of the specification. This is their opportunity to bring up any questions that they have, anything that is unclear or any any information they are missing. It is also your opportunity to give them any kind of specific guidelines you want them to follow during development. Most of the times, what would happen is you will write a specific feature assuming something is possible, which is fine. That is exactly what you should do if you have no way of validating it. Your developers will then tell you, look, this is not really possible. And then in a call, you and your developers should sit down together and figure out a technical solution for whatever problem you might have. What we have experienced is that a lot of the time we would specify something, our developers will tell us they can do it. And after we talk to them, we understand that there is a way to do it with a walkaround or with a minimal change. The thing is, they are not the product managers and they don't always understand the intent behind the features. So something you wanted to do might not be possible exactly like you wanted to do it, but it might be possible in a different way that they didn't think about because they didn't understand the intent. This is why it's super important to take the time to have a call with your developers and go over feature feature to make sure you both understand everything and you're on the same page. The next stage would be to get a time estimation from the developers. After you've clarified all the points related to the specification document, you would like the developers to give you time estimations per feature so you can understand exactly which feature comes first. As mentioned with the product specification document, sometimes you would think that a specific feature would take a very long time and actually after the time developers by the developers you can see that it's going to be much shorter and the contrary sometimes you will specify a feature that you'll think is very very simple but after the time specification from the developer you're going to see that it's going to take twice three times or even more the time you expected now this again opens up the opportunity to give your developers a call and try to understand the reason for the gap between your estimation and their estimation many times it's related to misunderstanding even though we went through the review and many times you just didn't think through everything and the developers they don't have this privilege they must think of everything when they build it otherwise things break and when they do think of everything sometimes things get much longer in terms of development after you get the time estimations, this is where you choose and refine your MVP just to come up with the features that you are including or removing based on the time estimation from the developers. Also, this is where you might change some of the features to kind of reduce the time estimated for this feature. A lot of the times you're just asking for something that you think won't take much time and it does, but it's not necessarily important for you to launch with the first product. So many times you're going to be able to rethink the feature, redesign it in a way that it's going to be 
much faster to develop and provide pretty much the same value for the merchants. The third step is the actual development. In this step, you need to make sure to manage the different development tasks with your developers. We will talk about tools that you can use a little later in this lesson, but it is highly important that during development, you follow up on the tasks and not just leave it up for the developers with you having completely no idea on what they're working on and what's going on. You need to have at least weekly status calls with them, even though when this is a new product and your very first project, we would recommend that you actually have a daily call with your developers. That's what we did when we first developed Reconvert. We would have a morning call with our developers to see what they're working on today, what they need input from us for, and what is the status on yesterday's tasks. In addition to that, like I mentioned, you need to use a task management tool to see exactly where things are, what needs to be tested, what is still in progress, and what is held up for any kind of reason. This is also your tool to make sure your developers are trustworthy. We talked about it a little bit in the last lesson. You need to trust your developers, but when you're first starting out working with them, you don't have to just trust them out of the bat. You do need to follow up with them and make sure they are doing what they're saying they're doing. The next step would be testing and client testing. You want to make sure that your developers are creating some automated tests inside the code to make sure that everything is functional and working. But after they're done with this, they're going to let you know that they're done and this is the time for you to actually test their work and make sure that all the features are working as expected. Looking back to the specification document, you might have few different types of users. You want to make sure that the app works for each and every one of them. If you build an app that adds something to the storefront, you want to make sure that it works for the customer in few different environments. You want to make sure that it works on mobile. You want to make sure that it works on desktop. You want to make sure that nothing breaks, that everything keeps working. You want to make sure that the admin dashboard works as expected. And again, if there is a preview and an actual display, you want to make sure that it works. You want to look at analytics. You want to look at time zones. Basically, you want to test everything and try to be as detailed as possible. Whenever you are doing client testing, to be honest, in many of the cases, there are still a lot of small bugs and small fixes need to be done. What you would like to do is to document these bugs as best as you can with videos. You can use Loom. We'll talk more about the tools later and you want to be as specific as possible. Many times it's going to be a little bit hard to identify the exact cause for the bug, which means it might be based on time zone. It might be based on your IP. It might be based on your browser and stuff like that. So you need to make sure that you being able to identify and isolate the problem and only then give it to your developers. It might be that sometimes you won't be able to do that, but either way, you want to document these issues, list them down, and it's better if you do it for the entire feature, only when it's ready, and send it back to the developers to develop it again. Your developers will probably tell you that they have tested the system and everything works as planned. Do not trust the developers, and it's not because they're not trustworthy, it's just because everyone will test the system different, and you want to actually run client testing, which means use the app like the end customer and like the merchant to make sure that everything works, and there is a good chance there will be gaps. The more people that will go through the product, the more bugs you're going to find, and that's okay, that's completely fine. But as the product manager and founder of this product, you want to run the tests yourself just to make sure that the core functionality actually works. If it's smaller stuff that they have tested, it's not going to help us. We want to make sure that the core works and we want to make sure it works well. Now, these two processes of development and testing will continue in loop again and again and again until everything is ready to go. And that's time for the next part. And the last part of your development process is to actually launch the app. Now, this is not necessarily a part of the development process. This is something that happens at the end. After all of the testing, after everything has been done, you will launch your app. We haven't talked too much about servers, domains, SSL, but these are all things that will be handled during testing and launching. And they should be handled by your agency developing your app. But you will have to be a part of it. You will have to choose your domain. You will have to make sure that the servers are set up correctly. Even though you don't have the information on how to do that, you need to make sure you ask your developers the right questions. 
We will talk more about launching in the next lesson, but this is the next step when you finish development. When you launch the app, the work doesn't end. Development is a never-ending loop. If you really want your app to be successful, you would have to constantly develop it. And once you launch it, you will find new bugs. Your first few customers will come up with bugs that you have missed. And that is okay. It happens and it makes sense. And the good news are the Shopify merchants are usually very tolerant to small bugs, as long as you don't hurt their conversion or break their store, of course. So whatever bug come up after you launch your app you would have to take it back to the development and test it and actually go through the entire process all over again okay so now that we understand the development process let's talk about some of the tools you'll need in order to move forward with the development the first thing you'll have to consider is a task management tool and we recommend one of three trello clickup or the atlassian family that consists of a few different apps the beautiful thing about these apps is that they allow you to organize all of your tasks and break them down into subtasks different stages, priorities, assign different tasks to different developers and communicate directly on each task so you can have a bird's eye view of your progress. This is called a Kanban view and we highly recommend using it at least at the beginning. And also when you're just starting out, Trello might be the best option for you and not because it's the most advanced, not because it's free. Uh, ClickUp is also free when you're just starting out, but Trello is the simplest one to handle. Once you grow and you need some more advanced tools, we would recommend going with ClickUp, which is an amazing tool that allows you to add documents, integrates with pretty much everything and you can create custom reports and you can create a lot of powerful automations within it but when you're just starting out i think trello would be more than sufficient to handle all of your project management tools the next thing you'll have to consider is collaboration and calls we started out with skype this is great because you can create groups and you can have free calls video calls and screen sharing but we would recommend going with slack it is free at the beginning and it's very generous for its free plan and you can have screen sharing calls with video, audio, screen sharing. And they also have a feature that enable you to draw on the screen while screen sharing, which is super, super, super helpful. Another tool is Zoom, which is great just for the calls. And later on, you're going to use it for sales and demos and support. But we'll talk more about that later. When it comes to code management, some of the tools we would recommend using are, again, the Atlassian family, like Bitbucket and Jira, or using GitLabs. Whatever you choose to use, it's not that different to be honest. Start with a free plan, with a free version of whatever tool you choose and just grow from that. Your developers will know what they are used to working with and since all of these tools are so similar, I really don't think it matters where you start as long as it's something your developers are familiar with and feel comfortable with. These tools are very important to allow you to manage different versions of your code. For example, you can launch your very first version of the app and then immediately start working on the next version. So you will have to manage two different versions of the same code, one of them with the new updates and one of them with the production environment that consists of the original MVP. As you go, you will see that you need more and more versions of the same code because you might want to work on a few different features at the same time. Each one of them will have its own branch, its own version that your developers work on and it is only released to the live version once it is completely ready and went through the entire testing process. There's a lot that we can talk about here, but your developers will also know the job. You will learn it and build it with them as you go along. So this sums up the development process lesson. Of course, there are so many more things we can talk about when it comes to development. We can go really in depth about the entire development process, but this is a crash course. So we are giving you some of our best tips in as concise of a matter as we can. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and if there is anything you would like us to make a deep dive video about also let us know in the comments and we will do that your tasks for this week are to complete whatever leftover tasks you have from the previous lessons and start development get to the point where your developers can start working on the next features where they know exactly what they need to work on and you know exactly how much it's going to cost you you need to take some overhead costs because usually time estimations are not accurate and you will end up having to pay a little bit more because of some unforeseen challenges that make the development take longer. This is okay, this happens. As long as it's not too much, it makes a lot of sense. So just make sure to take that into account in your budgeting. In the next lesson, we will talk about launching your app and what to do to start getting traffic and installs. Until then, have a great week.